Hey guys, so in this video I want to solve two more problems using constant velocity or average velocity and give you guys a chance to solve two of them as well. So let's get started. Remember first of all that if you move with constant velocity or average velocity, remember an average velocity will give you a constant velocity, there's only one equation which says that V average is delta x over delta t, one equation, three variables. There is sort of a variation, uh, a different version of this equation, which says that x final equals x initial plus vt. I call that, remember, the position equation. So first example right away here, how long would you take you in hours? So I want to know what is the time in hours that it would take you to drive from Miami to Seattle, right? And this is the distance. Um, if you could average this velocity. So I'm saying that your delta x... Again, this is going to be our equation. Your delta x is 3300 miles, or you could use 5300 kilometers. And your speed, your average velocity, is 60 miles per hour. Let me write it like this, miles per hour. Or um, that's the same thing as 96 kilometers per hour. Now, some people here might have the instinct of actually starting here but converting to meters per second because that's what you're used to but guess what I'm asking for the time in hours so it's okay to use a velocity that includes hours okay and if I were to pick this as my velocity even though miles is not um, SI unit uh, an SI unit that's okay too as long as I use this and they cancel okay so you can use these two together or these two together because it's miles and miles per hour kilometers kilometers per hour what you couldn't do obviously is just connect to the 60 and use it with the 5300 they're in completely different um, units and they won't talk to each other so I'm gonna do it with this one just for no reason um, V average is Delta X over Delta T so if you're solving for time you flip things around T comes up V goes down Delta T is delta x over v average and this is 3300 divided by 60 you put this you put this in the calculator and you get 55 but let me show you the units real quick um, delta x is 3300 miles and this is 60 miles per hour this miles cancels with this miles and this guy at the bottom here goes back up top I want to remind you that 1 over 1 over a is actually just a alright um, so this is 55 and I get 55 hours which is good news because hours is the unit of time and that's exactly what I want so the answer is just 55 okay straightforward one equation um, what I want you guys to do now is try practice one so what you should be doing is pausing the video, giving this a shot, um, and hopefully you get it right. I'm going to go right into it, but you should pause and try this yourself. So sound travels through air at this speed here. So that means roughly 344 or approximately 344. So I'm just going to say that the speed of sound is 344. That is a constant speed, um, So, but I'm just going to write V. Um, constant average you hear thunder about five seconds after seeing lightning bolt so here's the idea you're here um, lightning strikes here and lightning causes um, thunder but air travels way slower than light um, so it takes a little while for this guy to get here to you okay um, should probably draw should probably draw it this way actually just so that sound is traveling to the right, which is in a positive direction, you don't have to worry about signs. So sound travels with 344, and it takes about five seconds to get to you, and you want to figure out how far is this distance, right? And again, all you have to do is use V average, or just V equals delta X over delta T. And now I'm looking for delta X, so delta X is V T. The velocity is 344, takes 5 seconds. If you multiply it, I have it here, it's 1720. Now, 344 was meters per second, and 5 was in seconds. So you get 1720 meters. 
The problem is the question asks you to give this in miles. And one mile is 1609 meters. So I can say velocity, or I'm sorry, rather distance, delta x displacement is 1720. And now I can just convert. I want to get rid of meters and into miles. One mile is 1609 meters. And if you do this, I have it here, is 1.07 miles. That's why you might have heard the, th the rule of thumb that for every five seconds that it takes to a, uh, for you to hear um, thunder, that's one mile away that uh, the lightning uh, struck, right? Um, so if it's 10 seconds, that, that if the time that it takes to get to you is 10 seconds, then it was two miles away and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do, so hopefully you got that right. I'm gonna jump into example two. It takes you 50 seconds to go around a circle of radius 50 while running at a constant speed. Constant speed means I'm going to be able to use this equation here. Here's the tricky part. If you go around a circle, your displacement is actually zero. And your average velocity for an entire lap is also zero for one lap because you're back at the same place. That's why they talk about a constant speed. So here you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, if I write this, I might be tempted to put the wrong answer. So just to be safe, I'm gonna write that speed is distance over time. Now, if you go around the circle, um, around the whole circle, your distance here, your distance here is your circumference, okay? So distance around the circle, um, is circumference. So when you do one lap, your distance is 2 pi r. So all I got to do is replace this with 2 pi r delta t. Okay, I have the radius, it's 50 meters, and I have this uh, time, it's 50 seconds. The 50s cancel, and I'm left with 2 pi. So this is 6.28 meters per second, okay? That's how this stuff works. Um, again, it's speed, they're just looking for the magnitude. Velocity, the average velocity is zero because you're back at the same place, but your speed, you're always running with six. It's just that you're running with six this way, then you're running with six this way, then you're running with six this way, then you're running with six this way. Cool, I want you guys to try practice two. It's, um, it's also using, um, circular motion so you go in a circle but it's asking for something a little bit different so you should pause the video give it a shot hopefully you get it I'm gonna jump into it um, you have a circle of radius 30 and you move around it with a speed I'm gonna put s equals 5 and then it's asking how many laps do you complete in two minutes so for a delta t of two minutes which obviously that's 120 seconds it wants to know how many laps. Now, I don't want to talk about the whole idea of how many laps just yet. Um, first, what we're going to do is figure out what kind of distance did you move, and then we're going to try to convert distance into laps later. So distance, speed equals distance over time. And I'm looking for distance, so distance is speed times time. And notice how t and delta t are kind of used interchangeably. That's fine. Um, speed is 5. And time is 120. Okay? Speed is 5 and time is 120. And this gives you 600 meters. So the total distance that you went around this thing is 600 meters. Here's the idea. One lap equals to one circumference of distance. So it equals to 2 pi r, and it has a unit of meters. So one lap converts to meters um, using one lap is 2 pi r. So if I want to go from, what I can do is I can go from meters to laps. Right, it's a conversion. So 2 pi r meters equals one lap. Just think of lap as a unit. And then this m here cancels with this m and I'm left with laps. 
So this is going to be 600 divided by 2 pi 30. And if you put this in the calculator, you get 3.18, and that is has units of laps. 3.18 laps. So that's how you do that. Um, anyway, that's it for this page. Hope you got you got that right. Let's go on to the next one.